Hello and welcome to the Comlex and USMLE Instant Review Podcast. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional board review lectures. Now let's talk about immunizations. I want to talk about tetanus. With tetanus for the board exam, remember that the first step is to evaluate when the patient received their last dose of the tetanus toxoid and how many. So if it's less than three or it's unknown, then the patient should receive the tetanus and diphtheria vaccine. And the next step is to evaluate if the wound is clean or if it's unclean, in other words, has dirt, um, saliva, feces, anything like that associated with it. Then, in that case, the patient receives both the tetanus and diphtheria vaccine and the tetanus immune globulin. So just to repeat, with patients who have had less than three doses of tetanus toxoid or an unknown uh, number of tetanus toxoid vaccines, patients should receive the tetanus and diphtheria vaccine for a, a clean minor wound and you also have to give the patient tetanus immune globulin if the patient has a wound that's not clean. If the patient has received more than three doses of the tetanus toxoid, then you don't need to give the clean uh, minor wound or a unclean wound any of the immune globulins or the tetanus and diphtheria vaccine. Now let's talk about oral inactivated polio virus vaccine. Remember that you have to give children four dosages of the IPV and the last dose is at preschool age between four to six years. Any child up to 18 years of age should receive all dosages if behind. What about uh, the Hib conjugated vaccine? In the Hib conjugated vaccine, the most important point that the board exam likes to test is the fact that you don't give these vaccines after five years of age and if the immunization is not initiated um, until uh, 15 to 59 months of age, then only a single dose needs to be given. Otherwise, you give the patient three dosages plus a booster um, that's recommended between 12 and 15 months. So those are some of the high yield points for tetanus, IPV, and hip conjugate vaccine. And now I want to discuss pneumococcal vaccine. Pneumococcal vaccine, the most important point is to remember that four dose series is what's required. And if the patient is asplenic, then they're considered high risk and you give them an additional PCV7 booster. What about varicella? With varicella, if the patient is less than a year old, then they should receive a vaccine and the second dose should be at four to six years of age. Also, one dose for children 12 years or younger and two dosages for 12 years or greater. So that's a key association uh, that you want to remember. If the patient is less than a year, then you give the patient one dose. If the patient is the second dose should be given at four to six years. So the one, first dose is given less than one year, second dose at four to six years. If the patient is older than 12 years, then you give the patient two doses separated by four to eight weeks. Because the seroconversion rate is higher after two dosages in this age range. In addition, keep in mind that the varicell vaccine can cause the development of herpes zoster after immunization. And for MMR vaccine, it's a live attenuated vaccine. And the first dose is given at 12 to 15 months of age and the second dose at a preschool time, such as four to six years. Hepatitis A vaccine should be given two dosages apart at six months and it's recommended for children older than one year of age. And an important point about the MMR vaccine is that children who have not received the second dose should get it between 11 to 12 years. So the first dose is at 12 to 15 months. The second dose is at four to six years. 
and the third and and if they've missed that then you should give the dose at 11 and 12 years so those are some of the high yield points for the board exam in terms of vaccinations just some main rules you want to keep in mind for vaccinations that is hypersensitivity reactions egg hypersensitivity can occur with influenza and yellow fever vaccines neomycin is contained in IPV uh, measles MMR and rubella streptomycin is in IPV and MMR and vaccines are mainly thermosol free so with IPV the four dosages uh, neomycin can be a cause of allergy along with streptomycin and in addition MMR can give uh, neomycin and streptomycin hypersensitivity reaction if the patient has um, a allergy to neomycin or streptomycin now let's talk about misconceptions about vaccines the most important misconceptions are when the vaccines should be given and when not to be given so the following I'm going to say are not contraindications to immunizations a reaction to a diphtheria a vaccine of a temperature less than 105 causing redness soreness or swelling a mild acute illness um, patients who have a family history of seizures a family history of SIDS or sudden infant death syndrome uh, prematurity all of these are not contraindications so on the board exam you would go ahead with the regular schedule and give the patient the vaccine now what about the um, guidelines for the vaccines for um, certain precautions that you should take well a documented egg allergy is not a contraindication to MMR and the influenza vaccine does contain egg protein and on rare occasions can cause a hypersensitivity reaction fever is not really a contraindication for vaccines and if um, the patient is preterm then you immunize at the chronological age do not reduce the dosage and if hepatitis B is found in less than 2 kg patient then you should start the series um, at two months if the patient is hospitalized and if the surface antigen is positive in the mother then you should give the birth dose and the HBIG and also the four dosages keep in mind that if you miss a vaccine you don't need to reinstitute the entire series and in addition the vi live virus vaccines may be diminished when they're given shortly uh, before or during several months after giving an immunoglobulin also keep in mind that if a patient has um, AIDS HIV AIDS then they should not uh, be receiving the BCG or the OPV vaccine also um, MMR varicella can be considered in these patients keep in mind that uh, severe combined immunodeficiency X-linked A gamma globulinemia all these have contraindications to most of the vaccines that are live and that was a board review for the Comlex and USMLE on immunizations please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional board review lectures and good luck in your preparation and thank you for listening